So I've known William for years, full disclosure. He used to deliver kombucha to my house. How many years ago was that? Oh, we're looking at like seven years. Long time. Now it's kind of trendy, but seven years ago when you really started experimenting with brewing your own kombucha, it wasn't as well known. So what introduced you to it and what made you decide to kind of push in that direction as a chef? Out of need, really. Um, I had been drinking kombucha for like a year because I had had a bout with food poisoning and had a bleeding ulcer that resulted out of that. I was healing myself with kombucha and the funny thing is when I started cooking, I started making kombucha all at the same time. There was all these worlds that kind of coalesced all at the same time. I had no idea like this is what I really wanted to do. It was just something that I needed to do. So out of that need came passion. So if you're not familiar with what kombucha is, it is an ancient fermented tea beverage. Yeah, so kombucha can just be a beverage that you drink every day to help elevate your mood, to give you energy. It's one of the most beautiful things I've you know, spent this much time with. So what got you into fermentation generally? So I spent a couple years in Korea and every day on every table there was fermented things, cultured things. So it just kind of seeped in and I did a lot of research while I was there on the health benefits. That's what just started that. Here at Confluence Kombucha, yes kombucha is kind of the reason, the heart of what you're doing, but you do so many other kinds of fermentation. Here we have usually about seven different kinds of kimchi. I started doing salt brine pickles. I'm fermenting radishes and squash and looking to do even more things with that. I mean, we're just scratching the surface. The thing about fermentation is that it brings out all these subtleties and flavor that you don't get just by straight cooking something or just straight pickling it in a vinegar brine or something. The items on your menu are so unique. You're not, for example, offering up a Japanese dish or a Korean dish. You're taking these items and you're creating your own spin. This place is very intimate, but it's also very casual. And the things that we do here, I feel, are decadent in a way that you are treating yourself when you come here. People really need this kind of food in their lives. I feel like we're going through a big, a big change in the way that we come to food. And I hope I can help be a catalyst for that kind of change. This is activism. It's yeah. delicious activism. It's right. It's right. <laughs> well, I think it's time we get into the fermentation room. I want to see how you're making those kombuchas. So we're standing in the fermentation room. Show me the process. So we make tea, about a cup of sugar per gallon, and then we'll put in the SCOBYs, which is a symbiotic colony of bacteria and yeast. Is that what SCOBY stands mm -hmm. for? A symbiotic colony of bacteria and yeast. So there's about six to eight different kinds of yeast and bacteria in each kombucha. We'll get the SCOBYs into the jars. Um, you can see all the yeast that's been living on this thing. It's just crazy. Yeah. It does not look like something that you want to eat. Right. But it creates the most amazing flavors and it's so incredibly good for you. Yeah, I mean the, the probiotic content in this jar is just... <laughs> you think yogurt's good for you. Right, yeah. <laughs> so after you've put the scoby in, then obviously you're gonna put the cloth on top. How long will it sit with the scoby before you infuse it with the flavors? Our average for most of our teas is about 21 to like 25 days. I've had some go 65 days. Wow. So can yeah. I pick one of these guys yeah, up? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, it's slimy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it feels so weird. <laughs> can you just drop it in? Yeah, a little bit more in that one okay. to bring it up. There we go. Look at this thing. <laughs> that is crazy. It really is like an alien life form. So what are these? This is tea that's already been fermented. They're being infused like for 24 hours. This one's got rose, honeysuckle, vanilla. And this one is jasmine, juniper, and hibiscus. Mm. And then this is a fresh hops. We put it right in the kombucha. 
So this is our Nukudoko pot. It's a traditional Japanese pickling bed made of rice bran, salt. We use gluten-free beer to kind of bring it together. I flavor it with lemon peel, a little bit of Thai chili flake. The rice bran starts to ferment and then you can put in whole vegetables. Um, cucumbers take about 12 hours in here to pickle. And then we do all different kinds of vegetables and fruit and they all take their own amount of time. We'll take these out, rinse them off, we'll cut them up and make a dish out of it. This is my favorite part. We actually get to eat all these wonderful things. This is the Nukazuke plate, um, which is the vegetables that are pulled out of the rice bran. I love the fact that it doesn't overwhelm the flavor of the vegetables. It just brightens it up and makes it super crunchy and vibrant. I've eaten a lot of tempeh. That's delicious. <laughs> if tempeh can be luxurious, then I think that's what this is. This dish kind of hits on every single part of like what we do here. It's emblematic of the restaurant. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. So these are the kombuchas? Yes. We have peach with clary sage, chaga, sun gold black garlic. We have hibiscus, jasmine juniper, rose honeysuckle vanilla. It's a unique flavor. Mm -hmm. And if you've never had kombucha before, it is a little bit sour. So if you like sour beers, um, that's mm -hmm. something that you can kind of get a sense of the flavor. But the way that you make it, you infuse it with all these different ingredients. And because you're using the black tea or the white tea, to use green tea as well? Yep. All mm -hmm. different kinds of yep. tea. Then yep. you can really play. A lot of these ingredients are available commercially, but you can't actually get the beautiful stuff that you're making. Not in the stores, but you can come right here. We have a provisions menu that you can grab. It's really incredible. People are responding really well to having that kind of access to what we're doing here. It's, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm.